As promised, we've caught up with one of the furthest throwers in the game. He's also one of the youngest players on the Pro Tour, Drew Gibson. Drew, let's get right down to it. How are you holding a disc when you're trying to rip something five, six, seven hundred feet? Let's start with the basics. Uh, I use a three finger power grip on the bottom, pinky tucked, just the three fingers laid in there, you know, just grab it. I don't curl them, I don't, just pad, pads on the rim of the disc. I put my thumb right here, right where the rim ends on the disc, so on the softer part. Right there. Do you feel like you have a lot of pressure between the thumb and your fingers? Do you press down kind of hard? No, there? not much at all. It's pretty, it's pretty loose in my hand. I mean, compared, I know some people, you know, hold it and they're like bending their disc in their hand. And I mean, mine isn't loose, but I mean, it has a little give to it. So that's how you're holding the disc. And now talk a little bit about angle of release. We know Anheuser to flat and then a finish is how you're doing it. So show us that angle of release when you're holding it or you're, you're thinking your arm is coming through. I mean, when I'm trying to throw like a big, big power shot, I'm trying to keep my wrist, you know, I don't try to do too much of this. And I don't, you shouldn't let your wrist open up too much. I mean, it should be, you should have a quick little pop at the end, but it shouldn't be, you know, where you're curling your arm like this. You know, that's when you get the problem of people who wrap around, you know, when they come back around like this, you know, there's so much room for air down the fairway. You know, my main thing is pull it back, you know, and keep your wrist, I mean, all your parts out here should be straight. And as you come through, you kind of bend them all until the hit point of the shot. So, I mean, it all starts obviously with the angle. If you don't throw it high enough or on the right angle, your distance shot's gonna go on the ground or go high or, you know, do something you don't wanna do. It's just all about getting the nose of the disc. And it's the angle that you release the disc at that's gonna propel it. I mean, that's the moral of the story. You can throw it as hard as you want. If you don't throw it on the right angle, it's not gonna do what you want, no matter how high or how low. You know, it's all about that perfect angle to get it to flip up, you know, and fly. So now we're going to see some of the slow motion of your profile of you throwing. But if you could, how do you feel like you're pulling it across your chest? You just showed us. I mean, but how does it feel to you if you could do it in slow motion right now? How does it feel when you're reaching back and pulling back? I'll just do my whole throw. So I usually go, I mean, I start out here. My first step is out and then I go into a cross and I pump up and as I come back through here, it comes right, I mean, more times out of 10, that's, I mean, that's like if I were to throw like a hyzer flip up shot. But as you come here through, you know, right, I mean, probably right, right where your, you know, abdomen meets, you know, your stomach, you know, right in the soft spot. So as you come through, it should be, you know, right through here. Now, obviously, if you're gonna throw a roller, you know, you're gonna have to come, I call it the rainbow. You don't want your arm to do, you don't want to, your wrist to roll. You come up, boom, over. You know, the same with if you're gonna throw a hyzer around a tree. You don't wanna go like this and then last second swoop in. You know, you wanna come and you wanna bring it up. And as you're here, you know, you use your whole body and your hips to propel the disc into the hyzer line. That's where most people go wrong when they try to throw a hyzer flip up or something like that. They end up pulling it back like they would throw their flat shot and then they pull their body in like this. And then it comes out you know, with less power than it would if they were to just pop it out there. So we can end today with Drew Gibson's pro tip. If they were gonna practice one thing and one thing only at home to improve their distance, what would that be? Reach back and don't curl your arm. You know, when you, you can do whatever you want in order to lead yourself to the reach back, you know, whether you wanna go like this, whatever it is, but make sure when you get your arm back, you're not shorting yourself, your wrist isn't, you know, make sure when you reach back, you're you know, reaching back. You're not going, you know, because this, you're, you're not really getting all you can get out of it. So when, you, when you're working on, you know, oh, I want to throw far, I want to throw this shot better, or I want to be able to hit that gap 300 feet down the fairway, what you want to do is you want to work on that reach back. Because you pull it straight back and straight forward, more times than not, your disc is going to come out of your hand straight forward how you'd like. I suppose when you start curling it, you know, and wrapping yourself around your body, you're going to start having sprays. You're going to end up right, left. You know, you're going to throw it good, and you're going to throw it left, and you're going to throw it right. You know, it's just all about that getting comfortable with the up and pull back through. I mean, I call it the hit zone. Right here is where all you end up with all your power. I mean, you can go from here, and as long as you, like Alex Geisinger, he throws, he pulls it back to here, but uses his hips and his lower legs to propel the disc. You know, I prefer to pull, to reach back, and swing my hips, you know, and use my torso and my arm, obviously, you know, to repel the disc. 
and as you get through, you know, from your from your hips to your shoulder to your elbow to your wrist, you know, it's it's really what you need to work on. It's just keeping your body all in one motion. You shouldn't be up, stop, you know, oh, stop, stop. You know, it should be a one motion, you know, to the target. Whether it's an upshot, whether it's a 600 foot drive. If you wanna throw it up over the tree, you wanna, you know, keep your body going in a motion that's gonna let the power go through your body, from your feet, you know, up, out your arm. All right, well, with that being said, whether you practice the salsa, the tango, or the 600 foot drive, that's Drew Gibson and your distance pro tip. Thank you, buddy. You're welcome.